Hello friends. So as a part of a snippet series, um, so there was a very interesting article that came on algorithmic approach to managing acute necrotizing pancreatitis. I have done a separate video on update on the management of severe pancreatitis. But of late, we tend to see more of necrotizing pancreatitis. And we tend to obviously involve gastroenterologists, surgeons and interventional radiologists to formulate the plan of management in this necrotizing pancreatitis. And intensivists are sort of have a lack of clarity as to what is the right interventions that needs to be done in this necrotizing pancreatitis. And we get very often severe cases of necrotizing pancreatitis quite commonly. And there is some sort of a formulation of the plan that tends to happen between surgeon, gastroenterologists, and interventions. And not necessarily intensivists are very clear about what 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 the literature says about the formulation of the plan so the whole snippet is to have an algorithmic approach so that intensives are aware the type of language that are being used by these teams when they're intervening and whether what's the right way right algorithms to follow so i'll just show you the algorithm let's keep this in back of mind when we are working as a team to manage this acute necrotizing pancreatitis so when you have this necrotizing pancreatitis basically the the peanuts of management would be supportive, which includes fluids, good nutrition, and pain relief, which all intensivists are experts in. And we do a very good optimal therapy of all these three. And then the question is whether it is a sterile, asymptomatic, necrotic. We are talking only about necrotizing pancreatitis, whether it is sterile, asymptomatic necrotizing, which is easy to treat, or is it sterile, symptomatic necrotizing pancreatitis, or is it infective symptomatic necrotic? So, if it is infective symptomatic necrotic, the answer is very simple. You have to give antibiotics and then you can't stop at that. So, so we'll come to that. If there is a sterile asymptomatic, which the patient is asymptomatic and necrotic, which is easy to manage with supportive management of fluids, nutrition, patient improves, then you continue with your conservative management. But if it is symptomatic necrotizing, so remember the word symptomatic necrotic, or if there is infective symptomatic necrotic pancreatitis, then the question that gastroenterologists possibly ask is whether there is it is amenable for endoscopic drainage. So that's the question that GI team possibly will ask, whether there is a room for endoscopic drainage when there is a walling of the necrosis that tends to happen. And obviously, if there is asymptomatic necrotic improvement is not happening also, this question. So basically, this question arises whether there is a room for endoscopic drainage after the walling off of the necrosis that tends to happen. So if the question is yes, endoscopic drainage is possible, then one needs to ascertain with radiology teams whether there is significant solid debris that is present. If the answer is yes, the recommendation is to do endoscopic necrosectomy as you see. So, these are technical terms which GI teams are very much uh, well versed with. So, just let, let as intensivists at least know what they tend to do. Endoscopic necrosectomy is what is sort of suggested. If significant solid debris is not present, then endoscopic ultrasound drainage is what is suggested or multiple transluminal gateway techniques. Multiple transluminal gateway technique is the acronym that is used as MDGT has to be considered. I'll show you certain diagrams as to what multiple transluminal gateway technique is, but this is not our area of expertise. So just remember these words when GI teams tend to use. If there's no significant solid debris, then the suggestion as per the literature or algorithm is endoscopic ultrasound drainage and multiple transluminal gateway technique. If improvement happens, Continue this effective supportive treatment after endoscopic necrosectomy. If there is no improvement happens with these endoscopic interventions of drainage or multiple transluminal gateway technique, then one has to resort to surgical necrosectomy. So this is the algorithmic sort of an approach for necrotizing pancreatitis. If there is no room for endoscopic drainage of the sort of a necrosis that is present, then the suggestion is percutaneous pigtail drainage or video assisted retroperitoneal drainage or sinus tract endoscopy. STE is an acronym used for sinus tract endoscopy. So these are the suggested if there is no room for endoscopic drainage, then percutaneous drainage is what has been suggested. And the second is you can 
think of minimally invasive surgery. If things don't improve with all this, then the definitive plan will be surgical necrosis. So this just remember this algorithmic and this nomenclature. So first thing is you would prefer endoscopic ultrasonic drainage or endoscopic necrosis. If endoscopy is not feasible, then one has to consider percutaneous drainage with interventional radiologists or I don't know, in some cases, maybe gastroenterologists also may be trained in this or sinus tract endoscopy and minimal invasive. So this is how the algorithmic approach is. So these are just the pictures to reflect upon what multiple transluminal gateway technique is. So I won't dwell into details because we are not experts and we don't need to understand the technicalities of this. So this is again ultrasound, endoscopic ultrasound sort of a drainage of the necrosectomy. And this is simple. I think interventional radiologists do this percutaneous drainage or it could be video assisted drainage or sinus tract endoscopy. So these are some of the techniques one can use if there is no feasibility for endoscopic intervention. Then there is a nomenclature called disconnected pancreatic duct syndrome where there is discontinuity of the pancreatic duct as you see in this image. The pancreatic duct continuum is disrupted due to the extensive inflammation that has happened. If there is disconnected pancreatic duct syndrome, the suggestion is endoscopic ultrasound guided pancreatic gastrostomy, or one has to resort to surgical intervention, which is lateral pancreatectomy or Rho and Y or pancreatic jejunostomy. If endoscopic ultrasound uh, is not helpful and refractory, one has to resort to surgery. So, this is the sort of algorithmic approach as per the latest uh, literature reference uh, as to how we approach the patients with acute necrotizing pancreatitis, which is the severest form of the pancreatitis. So the simplest way to remember is if they're asymptomatic in supportive management and then always the question arises after the walling of the necrosis, whether there is a room for endoscopic. The first step is or the first sort of a preference rather is endoscopic necrosectomy is what is preferred. If that is not feasible, then percutaneous is sort of thought of. If all these two fail, then minimally invasive surgery. If that also fails, then one has to think of uh, necrosectomy. So that is the sort of order which has been referenced and, uh, and, and sort of accepted by a large group of uh, uh, sort of experts. And this, this is from the latest article that came in 2024. If there is a discontinuity of the pancreatic tract, then Generally, the signals are towards surgical interventions is the way to go. So that's about it, folks. It's just a snippet review, just an algorithmic approach for intensivists to be a little have clarity on the type of language or on the type of process that needs to be put in place when you're dealing with it. And it's a teamwork. So GI specialists would be involved, surgeons would be involved, and IR would be involved. And that is the right way to go. So request you all to submit your valuable work to a journal of acute care. You can visit my website. Uh, to rehear to this lecture. Thank you, friends. Thank you. Thank you, Manindra.